Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Photoshop Quick Tips Podcast. My name is Justin Seeley and I'll be your host. In this week's episode we're going to be taking a look at how to blur your background while keeping your foreground in focus, simulating depth of field. Recently I had a tutorial request for this particular technique from William, so big shout out to William, thanks for watching the show. And so basically what I'm going to do is take the cow that's in the foreground here, I'm going to keep him sharp and I'm going to blur his friends in the background. Very quick, very easy technique. First thing I need to do is duplicate my layer. Do that with Command or Control J on the keyboard. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a selection on this new layer by using the Quick Selection tool. The Quick Selection tool, of course, located in the same box as the magic wand. When you get the Quick Selection tool ready to go, I'm going to bring that in. And I'm just going to make a selection of this cow right here. It doesn't have to be perfect because your selection is going to be what you use to blur out this image and to make it look realistic you're not just going to have one thing just completely in focus you need to have it kind of gradual and a little kind of off maybe <laughs> and so I'm going to go ahead and fix up this selection as best I can like I said it doesn't have to be perfect but you do want it to be roughly in the shape of the cow and so there we go. Got my selection made. Now, remember, I said I'm going to keep this guy sharp while blurring the background. So I need to inverse my selection. Shift Command I or Shift Control I on the keyboard will automatically do that. Or you can go to the Select menu and choose Inverse. Once you have your selection made, it's time to go to the Channels panel. In the Channels panel, we're going to go ahead and click the New button right down there at the bottom. You get a new channel called Alpha 1. I'm going to default my colors to black and white by hitting the letter D on my keyboard. If necessary, I'll hit the letter X to make sure that my foreground color is set to white. Once I have my foreground color set to white, I'll use Option Delete or Alt Backspace to fill my selected area with white because I want to blur that part of the image while keeping the other part of the image in focus. So remember, when you're dealing with masks, white reveals black conceals so black will conceal the lens blur that I'm going to apply while white will reveal it so command or control D to deselect I'll click the RGB channel to go back to normal and go back to my layers panel make sure I'm working on that duplicate layer then let's go to the filter menu go down to blur and we'll choose lens blur when we get into the lens blur dialog box, you're going to get an image that's completely blurred out. Everything's going to be blurry. That's not what you want. You want your foreground sharp, your background blurry. So we need to do something called a depth map. It's right up here. I'm going to change the source to alpha 1. That's that alpha channel we created. As soon as I do that, you're going to notice my cow here comes into focus. If I zoom out, you'll see that the other cows in the background are blurred out. Now you can play with the radius if you want to. If I increase the radius you can see that the blur becomes much more severe on the guys in the background. Probably a little bit too much. It's not very realistic. So I'm going to back that down. And I think probably around 10 should get it. Now blade curvature and rotation. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Specular highlights for the brightness. I'm going to bump that up a little bit maybe to about seven now the other thing that you're going to be missing when you do this is noise you need noise so we're going to add just a little bit of noise from this and if you want to zoom in just a little bit you can kind of see you want to match as close as you can to the original grain of the photo I think probably two is okay here you might want to go ahead and do monochromatic noise too. That's going to avoid some of the uh, color alterations that you don't want to see. Then we'll go ahead and we'll hit OK. When I hit OK, it takes me back out. And here is the before, everybody in focus, and the after. With the guys in the background blurred out, my man in the front 
still hanging tough and sharp. So that's it. Just a few simple, easy steps to blur your background, keep your foreground sharp. So, William, I hope that answers your question. Thanks again for watching the show. Thanks to all of you for watching the show as well. If you have any questions or comments, you can send those to me via Facebook at facebook.com slash Seely, S-E-E-L-E-Y-F-B, as in Facebook. Or you can reach me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Justin Seely. Or you can always feel free to email me like William did at justin at Seely.tv. Now, before I go, I have a couple of announcements I want to make here. Number one. I've relaunched PhotoshopQuickTips.com, so if you want to check that out, got a brand new page, brand new look there. And I also have a brand new site that I just launched to help you guys out. It's called PSShortcuts.com. There you'll find a scrollable panel with every single keyboard shortcut in Photoshop listed, and you also find a link to download a PDF for all of the keyboard shortcuts inside of Photoshop CS4. So check that out, PSShortcuts.com, PhotoshopQuickTips.com as well. Remember to send me those tutorial requests. That's what's creating the content for the show. Love the feedback. Love the interaction. Thanks, everybody, for watching. See you next time.